All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Card Talk. I'm Ryan, joined, as always, by Tyler and Lou. And today's episode is going to be a fun one. Tyler and I are currently recording Card Talk live from London. Different locations in London, but we're both in London. Lou, rocking the Astros hat, back in Jersey. Game three so this, is gonna, this is going to be a fun one. We've got a lot to talk about today. We have Play of the Week. We have Facebook questions. PSA is back with $15 a card. There was a big weekend in sports, and we'll get to that in a second. But first, we'll start with what's on your mind. Ty, you look ready. You look focused. We'll start with you. Mm-hmm. What's on your mind? We're going to talk a little London ad nauseum in a, in a little bit. A little recap from what I thought was a, a very fun show. Uh, what's on my mind is I come into this episode feeling very fulfilled and with a lot of love and feel – like I'm closer to, to Ryan than ever currently because we're closer than when we typically record shows and I feel very far away from Lou, like different different time zones of sorts. Um, Weird. But overall, I feel really good. I've been in London since Friday morning. Um, we had an amazing time at the card show. Saw some proper footy matches. Uh, saw Les Mis last night. Checked into a new hotel. Just from a little NFT London um, thought leaders dinner where I connected with some good people. The, the tubes I mean, compared to the New York City subway is like crazy. Uh, I'm in I did a little mm-hmm. Wi-Fi. I'm back. It froze for a second. Relax, Jay. And uh, I'm having a problem. Relax, Jay, with that. He's frozen. That's good. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Relax, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Ty, we can see about half of you, brother. You got that. Do, we want, do you want me to... Try to reset it. You look. You know what you, you look like? You look, you look like how Ryan normally looks. It will looks. be clean. <laughs> Ty, you got anything else to say? No. Best episode ever. (laughs) Shout out to the listeners still here that haven't already canceled this and been like, okay, well, this is a terrible Uh, episode. No. (laughs) (laughs) Lou, what's on your mind? Um, What's on my mind is I didn't realize it until we got into the pre-show, but I I realized I got to put this show on my back and I got to figure it out. I got, I'm the one with the proper internet. So I'm going to do my best to keep us together as a crew. So that's first thing on my mind. Um, second thing on my mind, game through the World Series. It's baseball season, as I've said. Um, I've never wavered off of that. It's always been baseball season. Baseball season ends next week, and then we'll worry about what else is going on in the world uh, and the sports world specifically. But, um, yeah, I'm just thinking about the World Series, honestly, if I'm being real. The game's in like an hour and a half. So, Yeah, and that's what – I'm going to just – Lewis, I appreciate you you sharing that. Just as we transition into mine, I just it, it makes a lot of sense that you're. Hang on one second. Can I pause you for one second? Can I pause you for one second? Hearing if you how rough it was, just to hear all this shit I heard from you two the last five weeks, six weeks about the Jets are good. Here we go. It's New York. We're good. We're back. We're we're gonna win something. It, we're gonna play meaningful games. Just to lose again to the Patriots for the 13th straight time. You're not back, you're not relevant, and you're not going to play meaningful games. We might not either, but I know for sure the New York Jets are. And you know who else probably isn't going to play any meaningful games anytime soon? Penn State. Mm, they stink hurts. too. They me. stink too. I like Ty. I love Ty. Got to see him. Try to get him to do the little OH from the show. He didn't. I like Ty, so I'll take it a little easy on Ty. But Jay and Ty and Lou, your New York Jets are not back. They're not good. Zach Wilson stinks. He's terrible. And the, I, I love it. I waited all weekend to talk about the Jets. But Lou, you were saying? Just two quick things. Let me ask you first question. What's the Patriots record? Four and three. No, that's wrong. So that leads to my second question. If you don't watch the games, shut the f- up. 
You don't watch the Patriots. Go after Penn State all you want. I can't believe you walked right into that. That was perfect. You don't watch the Patriots. You are an idiot. Worry about the Browns. Worry about Ohio State. That's not my problem. If you can get to the playoff and you can beat Georgia, fine. Until then, shut your mouth about the Patriots and the Jets. I was right now. I saw you. Tw- I saw you put in the group chat this weekend. It said, "If Ryan brings it up one time, I know damn well he doesn't watch these games. If he brings it up, it'll be a bad day for Ryan." I don't even know the f- record. <laughs> Sorry, Jay. You don't even know the record. Who cares? All I know is you didn't win, and I was so excited. I I I did watch some clips of Zach well, Wilson sh- pizza in fucking London. He I, I yeah that pizza was rough. Um, I did. <laughs> I did not watch the game at all, for sure. You know what? Just my my two cents. We probably end up with certain losses this year. Um, Penn State and Ohio State. And, yes, it took Sean Clifford throwing picks and fumbling all over the field for y'all to make a fourth quarter comeback. Um, That's a good point. I yeah. am a Big Ten fan, and I don't wish as on other Big Ten teams, but – Y'all just think you have something, yet continuously win not much when it matters. Um, and none of your quarterbacks take. ever develop into anything. So that's Good my take. comeback to you. Todd, just real quick. Lou, Lou you had a couple too. rapid – CJ you Stroud's had a couple rapid just fire. big of a bum you had, Lou, Lou, Hey, Ty, real quick. <laughs> Lou, you had a couple rapid-fire questions. Ty, when's the last time Penn State won a national title? <clears throat> what about a playoff game? I can't get here with you. Ty, I'll do my best, though. What about a playoff uh, what, game? What, 96, 97? A playoff game or a national title? They they haven't been in they haven't been in the playoffs. Oh they okay. haven't been in the playoffs. It's just odd you bring up meaningful games and you're playing in the point setable. Oh, that's tough. We're not we don't play in the point setable. What what what, what would you say? Try. Then, like, what, what, we're gonna what go. You're gonna play in the point setable. I don't know. It was ten wins, like a bat. It, you think you're no, gonna win ten wins? Incredible. Who? We'll see, brother. Probably so. You, guys, you know what that looks like? We're point gonna be by over a touchdown from here on out. No, not true. Like you just come from this. Oh, we're Ohio State. We yep. beat all the teams that were far superior, and then when we play yep. a team that was equal caliber, we get smoked and act like we're better because we beat up on a lot of teams. That's right. Fair. So what does that Y'all mean? Y'all were 16-point favorites. You went into the fourth quarter down, and you beat our seventh-year quarterback. Hallelujah. I appreciate That's it. Right. You're going to get the you ball, picked, breaks you beat off you win. by a team when you, it matters, you him, just you like it him does every other time. And we're going to continue to stack 10, 10 wins a season when, like, four years ago, we had 30 less scholarships than you. So <laughs> I'm right. good. I'm good. Your I'm university good. is – all, only battling for third place in the Big Ten East. You guys will never amount to anything. You're never going to win any games. You're not going to go to the playoffs. Jay, you're, not, the... you're not going to win anything good. You, Jay, say this. Make sure you, you time ha- stamp this except, for me, Jay. Except, except life, except uh, uh, life uh, uh, Ryan. That's what Penn what State life? ones have over you. Winning <laughs> yeah, no, life. No the shot. Me, the me of the degree. That's no shot. And, and I would do that Penn State has put far better products into the NFL over the last four years than your first squad. Has. That's don't delusion. miss me with that. Delusion. You know what's delusion. You know what's That's tough for delusional. Jay? What's tough for Jay is that he's gonna have to put the audio that Tyler records and sends over this because you can't hear a single thing Tyler's saying. And that's unfortunate because he's making a lot of good points. You can't even you can't even Nobody, there's very few teams. There's maybe one or two teams that you could say has put better time in the NFL. We can't even have an I'm argument because my guy's Wi Fi is so poor. I can't even argue with him because I can't even, uh, there's no Wi Fi. There's not even a conversation to have. Lou, I, I just want to get your, your take. Yeah. I, I saw some claims on Twitter this week uh, that the Astros might have been uh, cheating mm-hmm. with like the pitcher. Just wondered mm-hmm. if you had any any words on what that might be for us, you know, b- non baseball fans. Yeah, what it is is delusion, like you were saying earlier. Um, it's a bunch of people who have no lives, shitty teams to root for, no championships, and are jealous that don't understand that players are checked every inning by the inning, 
by the umpires on both hands. So if you want to be a conspiracy theorist, that's on you. You can also talk about the bats. We don't have to get into the bats. A lot of teams are using the bats. A lot of tweets have been surfaced in the last 24 hours. I don't want to call anybody out, but a lot of people were using Albert Pulos' uh, bat back in the day. Service time manipulation, stupid rule by MLB, safety feature. It's 1-1 in the World Series. I'm focused on winning a World Series. I have no time for fake news and liars. I love it. I just love the energy. I just That's great. And, Lou, you know, shout out to you, too, though. I mean, I know you kind of were a little wishy-washy in the group chat after, but you did actually pick Ohio State to beat Penn State. I mean, that's just – you're just a real college football guy. You know, I'll give you that. Your NFL team's not very good, but you know baseball for sure, and you know how to pick them in college football. So that's just props to you. Um, I would say this for my friend Tyler, who can't be here right now. He's resetting his internet. Um, I would say Penn State is a great university. A lot of good people go there. A lot of my friends have gone there, Tyler Schmidt being one of them. Um, Ohio State isn't great. Their head coach was born on third base uh, and thought he hit a triple. And uh, they'll get stomped out by Michigan. And if they somehow get by Michigan, they'll get stomped out by Alabama or Georgia. And you'll be humbled again. So just make sure we have that clip for the end of the year show, Jay. Jay. That'd be great. Jay, it's 15-11 on, t- on Tuesday, November 1st. We're 15-11. It's into this recording. Do you think you're going to beat Alabama or, or Georgia? Uh, I couldn't be less worried about Alabama. Georgia, Georgia's a good team for sure. Georgia's a They just good lost team. Nolan Smith the rest of the year, by the way. Yeah, I know. That Real. sucks, man. Hey, Ty. I was just defending you. Yeah, and my, and my man Ty's defending Sorry, I was like, just uh, counting all the money I won from us covering, covering the line over the weekend. <laughs> Good teams win, great teams cover, everybody. Don't <laughs> yeah. forget it. Sorry. Yeah. I had to go check on my bank account. Seriously. Yikes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We should get into cards probably. All right. Ten let's – uh, we did have some conversation in the group chat this week. There was a big announcement. When was it? Saturday, Sunday? The Luca NT logo man yes. is being put back up for auction. It was originally – I think Shine had said that it – what was the number? I think Jay probably has it. 4.6, 4.2. So for a couple, couple 4.6. 4.6 million dollars originally. And there's no denying right now that the market is clearly down, right? Mm-hmm. There were some uh, sales on PWCC. I think Slab Stocks had tweeted about it. They had put out some fascinating numbers, talks about how this card sold for this originally earlier this year or last year, and it sold for way less this time. You know, the Brady contenders did 3.4 million. I think it sounded like 2.5 or 2.3. Like Brady content champ uh, ticket contenders down, you know, nearly a million dollars. There's plenty of big sales. Jordan PSA 10s, I think, are down to about 175, 180. Um, just the market in general is is down. So just wanted to get your guys' quick thoughts on a card like that caliber. Do you anticipate it selling for more or less? Why sell it now? Just trying to trying to get a feel for what, you know, what, what goes through your mind when you see a card like that being sold? I was going to let Ty go if his internet's working. Yeah, I'll go. Um, yeah. I think uh, it's, it's a couple different things. I think that uh, what I don't try and do is make assumptions for the other person. These are the reasons why I think you would sell that card in this market. What I will say, though, is there's a lot of people that probably – 18 months ago, put 5 million bucks in Facebook or 10 million bucks in Amazon or the NASDAQ in general and are dealing with the same things. So, like, this isn't a cards are down type of environment to me. Yeah, I don't um, think. But that's, that's what I think. I mean, you look at the, the, some of the greatest companies – that have come out of this country in the last 25, 30 years, like dealing with the same stuff. Yeah. I don't think it's a card or not. Times we're in this echo chamber. I just think this echo chamber of like, Oh, like everything's down bad. And there's a reason why and pump and dump and hate on people that like are about what's going on and make content and media when there's just other factors at play. Yeah. I do love the, uh, the random tweets about, you know, this Pokemon or this F1 card or this card or something was was pumped and dumped when every single asset I think most of us own at this point is is down. I mean, outside of a few Jalen Hurts cards, like Brady's down, Jordan's down. Like, I don't think anybody's really going to bat on some of that kind of stuff. So it's definitely interesting. But, yeah, I'm not saying, like, 
cards are down, like just cards are down. NFTs are down. Cryptos are down. The stock's down. Like there's not a lot that's like on fire at the moment. I mean, there's, I think that's just, there's a lot of other things at play. Um, yeah. So Yeah. I, I agree with you guys. The first thing Tyler said was that he's not going to uh, consider someone else's situation. Try to put like, you can't do that is the point that is most important to me. Like, I don't know what people are doing with their money. I don't know why people sell, buy or sell things at a certain time, but just because everyone think like, I don't know the answer to this question. I think it's safe to assume it'll sell for less than what it was previously bought and sold for. But like, we don't know the answer to that question. Like, we don't know how much it's going to sell for. We don't know if like Luca gets someone's really excited about this loop card and stashes it for the next 25 years. Like, we don't know what's going to happen with the card. So on that front, it's a little bit hard to say, like people have the reasons for why they do things. We don't know what it's going to sell for. So from that front, it's a little bit hard, but I think the global point is like, everybody takes any opportunity to just say like this thing sucks now or like the price is down now. So it's getting dumped and it's like, that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like you will find what you want to find on in this hobby. Like if you want to find negativity, you're going to find it. If you want to find interesting, like little tidbits, like from guy like Eric who posts really interesting data on a daily basis, or, you know, you follow people who make content, whatever, like people need to like, slow it down because the reaction to the luca post the luca auction was so wild to me people were so negative and so ridiculous about the whole situation uh, yes there's a lot of things going on in the world right now prices on a lot of things are down like you guys have both said and i'm not gonna overdo the point but like it's so negative like everybody just chill out everyone has their own reasons for why they do it we don't know what it's gonna sell for chill yeah it's yeah, it's very interesting, especially when stuff like that happens. It's, it's uh, anytime I ever, like you see it and they're like, yeah, this guy, this guy's an idiot. Why do you buy it in the first place? This guy's so dull. Like it's just yeah, like, why would you turn it around in a year and a half or what? Like, yeah, it's none of your business. Like, shut up. I don't know what the cards gonna sell for. I would typically agree with you, Lou. That do I anticipate it selling for less? Yeah, probably. I, Safe not. to assume everything yeah. sells for less now. Yeah, I'm not ex- I'm not expecting it for, to go for 20 million, but I don't, you know, who knows? I think there's like I said, a lot of stuff going on. We'll we'll see. Um we uh we have a little contest going on. Uh we want to have a little fun with it. See what see what it goes for. Uh so tweet us what you guys think the Luca NT logo man will sell for. The person who comes closest, not including the buyer's premium, will win a car talk hoodie. That's sneaky because buyer's premium is going to be pretty hefty, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. What is it, 10%, 20%? Yeah, and if it's going to go for over, you know, 2 million bucks, 3 million bucks, yeah. whatever. Like that. I mean, 3 million, anyway, that's three million bucks is $600,000. Yeah. That's a hell of a buyer's premium. So, where uh, where should it be an auction? I PWCC? don't know the answer. Golden? PWCC. PWCC. Gotcha. Okay. All right. In, uh, in watch. I'm excited to see it. <clears throat> Yeah, big card. Big, big card for sure. Um, real quick, I saw earlier today, I haven't been on my phone a ton. Yep. Uh, I've been out of the country, but I did see PSAs bringing back $15 a card. Yep. Like a co- collector special. And I think it's 1996 to present, $15, estimated 120 day turnaround, which I believe is about six months. Any, any thoughts on that? I think there's a. It's an interesting time in cards right now. I don't fully understand the rationale on the lowering outside of like they're trying to get back to their previous business standards of like this is what they charged before. But um, I feel like every week there's a new announcement about some grading company lowering their prices. So take that for what it's worth. Yeah, I think it's. Think this is a sign of the market though like are like a lot of the stuff in the markets down in general like it's going to be interesting to see what happens with grading opening back up right i mean cards before years ago you go back and what it get down to eight bucks mm-hmm. right eight dollars a card seven dollars a card nine dollars a card whatever it was mm-hmm. like how long until it gets down to that point because you see slabs now like We've talked about it before over the years. I mean, what are we on? Season three of Card Talk? We've been doing this together for a long time. We've had conversations about, like, are we in a junk slab era? Like, that conversation has come up on Card Talk. There are slabs now. Like, Jay, what did the Donruss PSA 10 Clyde Edwards Alaire sell for? 
Jay put the screenshot in here once. It was rough. It was like four dollars. Clever Chalera Don. Five dollars. Yeah. Five dollars. You can't even ship a card for five dollars. I don't think. I mean, it's like three dollars. Three. I mean, three fifty. I'm being facetious, but like, it's three fifty. I mean, that that card in perfect condition from the current number one grading company sells for five dollars. It's like, as time goes on, I, I I think, I hope the market is a little bit more decisive about what, like, a little bit pickier about, uh, about what what it grades. But it's going to be interesting to see with if the market doesn't immediately rebound, what is going to, what is going to be graded and what's not going to be graded at that at that price point. And is this, is this, uh, is this the bottom for a while or? You know, PSA was just at 18 at the national, 15 here. What about beginning? What about Q1 2023? Yeah, I think honestly, we're due for a long form conversation just about the state of everything on that front because it's things we've been talking about a million different ways for the last year and a half, two years, really since we've initially started. Is all the things that we thought were potentially problems down the road seem to be showing themselves right now. So I think it's worth a long form conversation, but. Um, I agree with you. Like, it's hard to find, it's hard to rationalize a 550 slab. Like, I don't know. People got, people were submitting so much stuff for so long that it just makes sense that this is what it would come to. And, and I don't think this, I mean, I think this 550, this $15 price point is going to get more and more. I mean, I think as the price goes lower, people will, there are people that have been sitting on stuff waiting for this day to happen that I'm sure will just flood PSA with this from 1999 to present. Like, Hey, you've got stuff. You're ready to slab it. 15 bucks. We'll see you in six months. Like grading's not new. Grading's always going to be around and people are interested in taking cards that are worth five to $25 and put them in PSA 10 slabs and playing the average game and getting them back later and selling them for 40. Like it, it's a, it's a thing and it's going to continue to happen until the market says we don't want these. I, I don't see it slowing down anytime soon, but cards like the Clyde Edwards layer, like Personally, I pro I don't give a lot of recommendations on here. I probably wouldn't grade Bailey Zappi score rookies, right? I think Bailey Zappi ends up in that same box. Yeah, that I feel Clyde, about that one. Clyde Edwards Alaire ends up on. We've talked about that Clyde Edwards Alaire the same way we talked about Bailey Zappi. So we'll uh, we'll see. But yeah, I think it's point worth bringing up. But I, I think we'll look back on this. I'm going to be interested in this conversation six months, twelve months from now, looking back and being like, how did this play out? So, uh, but Ty, I know you're, uh, I know you're back with us now. Your, uh, your audio is going in and out there, a little Wi-Fi concern, but wanted to, uh, wanted to at least get your, uh, your takes on London, what that's been like, um, what you liked, what you saw, stuff like that. I think it's a reset of understanding that there's not really just free money sitting out there for people to just collect at will because they do something of minimal effort. Um, and I think it's, it's fair to accept that as a certain reality of a certain period of time. If you look back at just like the, the history and the time frame and what, what the last 10 years were from an economic perspective and then kind of the infusion of cash and everything. Um, but I think when even walking around the show in London, I don't know, like, you want to sell a sports card for more money than you bought it for? Like, that should take some form of either skill or business savvy or outworking another individual to do that. And so, like, when I hear about, like, is it a slab wax era? I think someone can have a business set up where when Bailey Zappi happens, they can grade a couple of scorecards and make a couple bucks. Sure. Do I think that everyone should be able to do that? No. <laughs> I think that stock market, right? Like Robin Hood and just over time, over the last eight years, which also has coincided with this notion of the rise of social platforms and content and influence and, you know, everyone cries pump and dump and wants to be a protector of what's good and what's, you know, not good and what have you is like not as easy. And I would say probably in, in historical purposes, more of a regression to the norm, not a 
when are we going back to where things were? Um, yep. And I think that's good because I think that will lead to people realizing that hard work and putting in the repetitions and learning and trying to create a, somewhat of a moat around your business and doing something better than someone else, providing a service that is better better, quicker, faster, cleaner, easier, less friction. Those are the things that should lead to people winning in business, you know, then, and then just transitioning that to this weekend and why I like really thought that this weekend was, was special was because I don't know, you've got this kid named Harry. I just met over here for the first time that is like trying to put on a card show in London. Now the show was not in London proper. Like the show was, 40 minutes outside of London, which provides its own, you know, issues of how it very moved quick in the market now owns kind of the moniker of the London card show or kind of that IP. That's a little bit of a business moat that you have. That's better than the UK card show or the Sandown Park race course card show. So the next person that wants to do a London card show can't call it the London card show. My man's kind of got that on lock. And if he keeps building his business, he can level it up. And hopefully it's at freaking Kensington Palace by the time all is said and done. That comes down to how good he is and how well he can execute. Um, but Saturday, walking into that show, I show up after like literally taking a underground to the train, got on the wrong train, had to get on the Uber, like grind my way to the show. And there was like a 15 minute line, minute line to get into the place walk in small room but packed to the gills hot sweaty and there's like action and i think i thought it was great there's a lot of good community happening you know sellers not trying to gouge a lot of lower priced soccer stuff you know stuff in the two digits a lot of raw cards were there but just like a genuine i i thought what was so palpable was there was a far more of a genuine interest in what was actually happening then versus how much money was being made. And what I mean by that is whether it be, this is a Saturday and a Sunday and how can you use your time, whether it's weekend time or downtime or what have you to be engaged in a hobby that can teach you some skills that you can use elsewhere or make some money. There's a lot of father son combos walking around. I was there with my dad. Um, the general, like, I think, seeing how much soccer cards and the range of players and um, that were there, I thought was very cool comparatively to what you'll see in the U S. So it was like definitely a, a soccer centric footy centric um, show. And a lot of people that were just genuinely like interested in trying to figure out what has to offer. There wasn't talk of, Oh, all these cards are down or this is shitty or, or why can't things sell like the way that they were. There was genuine like, this is a hobby that's going to be here for a long period of time. People are interested in collecting. Salespeople are interested in why did someone's interested in this card. Narratives, having a little bit of history on the cards, not walking up and saying, well, this is the hot thing. That's why you should buy it. Um, and then we went back on Sunday and was able to bring a buddy of mine, Tosin, who plays on Fulham. And that was a really special experience. I've gotten to know him really through sports cards and NFTs. And, um, you know, here's, there's a cat that isn't into sports cards for making money. Let me, t let me make that super f clear. Like doesn't need the you, it, buying a card for 75 bucks and selling it for 90 or buying a $750 card, dollar card and selling it for 1250. Doesn't need any of that. Fairly well off, fairly well known, gets his ass in a car on a Saturday, on a Sunday morning after it has a premier league the day before drives his ass 40 minutes to the outskirts of the city shows up walks in humble as pie buys a ton of cards because of the actual authentic connection and interest in collecting these things genuinely collect connecting with the salespeople that are there the the vendors people that have booths he's walking up to people's table they're lifting their head up like holy shit, can i get a photo with you like of course i'm genuinely interested in this 70 dollar card that you have here <laughs> learning engaging we're there for two and a half hours i gotta go to the arsenal match he's like i'm hanging out here probably spending like another hour and a half there a couple pack rip mahomes 
one of the best people I've come across in this hobby, just genuine interest and in, in relationship building. Jamie, he bought a, a, this Nigerian legend that I need to learn about, picked up a card off of him. Uh, there was so much, you know, hey, I know you, you're into this player. Here's a card I have. A lot of people giving each other stuff and love. And I don't know, like the two days of, of going to that show gave me a whole new and different even perspective on um, what is sports cards, what is hobbies, what is passions, passions and interests that has nothing to do with the echo chamber of content that's being made or people being watchdogs or shitting on people because they think they're doing things that they're not, or just like genuine people having a good time on a weekend around something that doesn't have to be like changing the world or making people super rich or super poor, but like just wanted to get together over like-minded and connected interests. And that's applied sports passion. Well, it sounds like it was a really good time. If you heard any of it. Heard all of it. That was awesome. It was a the blast. best Wi-Fi you've had. It was a blast. I, I really, really, really had a, a great time. And and I, I, the hospitality was just amazing. You could almost remove what has occurred in the last three to four years in the hobby of like everything's exploded. And I think that show would still be happening and still have the same collective energy that it did. Yeah, it was definitely a great show. Hospitality was great. I think the big thing for me is I think it was an eye-opening experience. As somebody that does not have been very open, not really into soccer, like I have some politics stuff here and there, like Holland, like the the good the good players, like I'll have some of them here and there, but I don't actively seek it out. I don't try to understand it. It's it's not my forte. I don't enjoy it as much. Um, so as somebody that is not into soccer, it's very interesting to go over there to you know to come over here to London. And to see such a different market than I'm used to, right? I've, I've traveled to a lot of shows in a lot of cities, and I've been all over the country to different card shows, and I've seen a lot. And I've never seen a setup anywhere near like what I saw in London, right? 60 to 70% of what I saw was soccer, for sure. Not even close. There's a ton of soccer. There's a lot of Pokemon, a good amount of F1. There's a lot of, right other sports that I'm not as familiar with. And I think that's where it's like, it it was super eye opening because, you know, you talk about soccer and I'm like, yeah, no, thanks. Boring. Like doesn't do it for me. (laughs) But then you go over there and you see it. Right. And they live it. And it's like, that's what they buy and sell and trade. And it's like, it's easy to dismiss. This is not just about cars. This is life in general, but it's easy to dismiss something when you have no idea who or what is like how it's being you know bought and sold and it's like it's huge over there to me it's like i see the show and i'm like yeah no thanks like you don't see that much soccer at shows there's a few guys that are known for it that go to a lot of the big shows but for the most part it's a lot of football basketball baseball and to go there and see it it's like wow there's a lot of soccer i mean it was different because i don't normally buy it so to buy like we did a giveaway with whatnot they're getting started over in the uk so we did some stuff with them when we were over there and we bought some stuff for our own self to make a video like we brian came over with me and we filmed and it was definitely a learning experience because it's like well i'm not normally used to buying soccer there's 100 tables here 60 of them have got to be soccer so i've got to right try to wheel and deal and you know make something of it it's like it it was an adjustment so it was it was definitely different but i think that was the big thing for me is that it's like you know, I wish I would have been more open-minded from the beginning with F1. I like, I love that sport now. My wife and I, you know, go to that. We travel to that. We enjoy watching it together. So that's been a big part of my life. But I think it's it was super eye-opening to see how much stuff, especially in soccer, is really being bought and sold over there and how big it is compared to what, you know, I, you know, uh, take in from a content perspective throughout the week or at shows on the weekend. It was it was definitely, it was definitely different. And I think that, that to me, like where my head goes and speaks to two things, like every, we, there's so many different approaches, not only to take of like buying and selling cards, but obviously just like approach to, you know, life, but like there's the passion side of it. 
not everyone has to see everything like and act on it. We talk, we joke a lot about like, Oh, you didn't make the play or like it was there. And there was this, uh, I don't know. I saw this random quote this past week, essentially of like, it was this movie director and like passed on completely making this up for the context, like passed on Shawshank Redemption as a script. And they're like, how does that make you feel that someone else goes and like becomes like the greatest movie of all time? And it was like, it all starts with like, if you don't see it, meaning like the script came to you, it's not it for me, like goes to someone else and they see it like amazing, good on them. Not like I, I suck. Like it's like good on them. They saw it and that's where it all comes from. Not if everyone saw the same thing, it'd be like a pretty boring you know, approach to things. So there's that. You don't have to love soccer to be engaged in it. But then there's the flip side, which we deal with in play of the week a lot, which is like, if you're willing to do the work, if you're willing to shut down some internal biases that you have, if you're willing to listen to conversations and learn from other people and then deploy those things, there is a lot of potential room where a lot of people may not be seeing things to act. Yeah, it was fun. Uh I, I've never been here, right? This is really, this is by far the farthest I've ever traveled. And it was definitely a, it was definitely an eye-opening experience. And I, uh, London was great. I cannot wait to come back. I'm hoping, you know, Harry and the team over at the London Car Show continue to put this on. This is uh, something we got to get the whole gang out here next time. Jay, yeah, hopefully Ford, I'll be there next time. Lou, everybody come out for the London Car Show. Because it was a blast. We had, I just got to give a fun. major shout out to Reg. I got to give a major <laughs> shout out to Reg. Letting Ryan record this episode in the bathroom at 10 o'clock on the last night of their first ever Europe trip She's is sleeping. like really putting on for the card. Yeah, we have to get like up. Really putting on. Shout out, Reg. We have to get up super early. We have to get up five. I mean, five hours. And she's in front of me, like asleep under the covers because all the lights are on. I mean, this is all the lights on. Like this place is dark. It doesn't they have light. They don't do a lot of lights. <laughs> no, nah, like. no. They, they also don't. do tiny hotel rooms. Yeah. And, like no ice. This hotel room. No is, ice. They don't do ice in Europe. This is a big hotel room, but it has no lights. None anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> no ice either. And Lou, I laughed so hard when you said there's a card show in it because that word, they I, yeah, they literally say it all the time. It's a it's great a card show. Word. It, I mean, it's it's awesome. I could, it's it's fantastic. But yeah, English anyway. slang is awesome. Yes. Fantastic. So good. Mate and cheers are two words I need to add to my my vocabulary because I like those are awesome yeah, words cheers. and I yeah I definitely cheers mate um, I definitely cheers. do not they'll say, just say they'll say like nine in the morning cheers yeah <laughs> it's wild I love it over here so anyways uh, we're running long we uh, let's get into play of the week we got some stuff to talk about still at the what? end so let's uh, let's get into play of the week Jace has I think we've got I six this wait. week so let's see what we got. Oh, wow. All right. This is from Air ZG. It says, in early August, I started looking for a 52 Queen Elizabeth tops look and see. There's not many graded, uh, not many graded were available. And at the time, only one PSA on auction. I won the auction on August 5th for 245 shipped for a four. Last week, when they announced the Queen's passing, I listed the card on quick three day auction and it sold for 500 by a paid immediately. This is my first ever. Uh, sale flip netted 190 off the fees. Thanks. First Zach. ever? Your first ever move was a Queen Elizabeth card? What a savage. I I think, like, I honestly believe we talked about it. I think we did too, yeah. That's the first flip ever? That's a wild move for your first ever card pull. Kobe goes from Kobe to QE2. Rise a big royal guy, so. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, yeah I mean, cool card, 52 tops, historic. It's a. Uh, only thing. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it's just. Uh, it's one of those interesting or uncomfortable conversations that did you buy this expecting her to die and expecting to make money on the death? It's just a. I'm not sure I'm like seeking them out to find them, but Lou, Lou seems to disagree on this. Let's be very clear. We've talked about people dying and their card values going up for a really long time. Shout out to the queen. Shout out to all her corgis. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying it's if That's not, what you want to do. That's what you want to do. Yeah, just a fine line. 
Yeah, yeah. I guess. It, it is. It is. I mean, 52 tops. The line exists. It. That's the only, that's the real thing. Sure. The line sure. exists. Yeah, so. I just, which, which way are we leaning? What, where you land on it? I don't know who's to judge. Yeah. To each but their QE2 own. QE2 had a, had a full on life. Yeah. Her like passage, she's... she wasn't leaving anything on the table. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, for sure. I bet some of her family made the similar play. <laughs> Shout out to 52 Tops, though. That's iconic set. I, Good job, even... Jay. Great play, isn't it? Love that. <laughs> I see what you did there. That's All right, perfect. next. Next. Oh, here we go. Uh, Benson Pulls. Uh, what's good, guys? Here's my play of the week submission. I'm a broke college kid, so I mostly try to value box. I went to my LCS. Shout out to ICE. That's Indie Card Exchange. Uh, and I saw they had an F1 value box at 50% off. I'm not a big F1 collector, but I figured I'd look. I ended up buying three cards of guys I've never heard of before. I bought a Luca Giotto 2020 Topps Chrome Gold Auto at a 50. Frederick Vizier 2021 Topps Chrome Gold Auto at a 50. And a 2021 Chrome Christian Lungard 2021 Auto at a 3.98 for 20. Sold the Vizier and Lungard and got 50 bucks after fees and shipping for a profit of almost 250 and still have the gold Lungard auto left. Not bad for three guys I've never heard of. P.S. The Astros are still cheaters. Yeah, Benson, that's really unfortunate that you just ruined your submission like that. Um, quick question. I thought you were at a, I thought you were at your LCS, but it seems like you bought the other card on eBay. So I'm a little bit confused by your submission. And now I'm going to nitpick everything you do for the rest of your life. It just says it was he delivered. receipts for every single one of these sales for it to be considered. He just showed he just showed the cards that he sold. It says that says fifteen dollars. Oh, sold via promoted listing. <laughs> beep. <laughs> he said beep. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, Listen, I, you gotta have balls to come on here and drop the PS. The Astros are still cheaters and think you're yeah, getting the anywhere series. with the submission. <laughs> yeah, because. Shot. Yeah, because you know Lou is the most vocal when he takes shots in his team over any of us. So it's uh, to come at It would have been such a good play. Yeah. But yeah, I like the idea of the gold. We've talked about that before, about gold is the color that people like in the hobby. So to buy a Chrome F1 first year auto, I don't know who it is, but for a few bucks, I'd have probably bought it. And again, I just think people are looking for golds. It's a popular set. So yeah, good play. I don't know much about them, but I think it's a cool, cool piece. Cool play. Yeah, whenever I see that, I'm like, you were in a 50% off box and you found a gold auto? Yeah. <laughs> w. This is from H Miller underscore 27. Hayden says, uh, hey, guys, my play of the week submission highlights how the NIL rules now create opportunities and cards. At the October Chantilly show, first off, shout out to Chantilly. Love that show. Uh, I found a box with these three cards, $10 each or 25 I hear three. a lot of great things about Chantilly. Uh, the seller probably saw unlicensed college autos. I saw Heisman candidates and great prospects. I got all three for 25 sold the hooker for 85 on eBay, the Richardson for 25 on Twitter. I've cleared right around $90 and I'm still waiting on the gives to sell comps for around 30. Uh, thanks for the chance and go who's UVA fan. Uh, so it's an Anthony Richardson leaf metal draft auto. That's pink. Uh, Jameer Gibbs blue auto. Um, from Leaf Metal Draft, he plays for Bama. Anthony Richardson's a quarterback for Florida, and then he sold a Hendon Hooker Black Prismatic Auto for eighty-five on eBay. That's the quarterback, probably one of the top two Heisman guys at this point. Plays for uh, Tennessee. Yep. So yeah, I, I think this happens a lot. Like we, I had a couple of Hendon Hooker autos. I ripped a few uh, few boxes of Leaf Metal Draft. Sold. I had a bunch of them laying around. Picked them out when the season started. Sold those on eBay. He sold well early. Probably sold a little, little, uh, little too soon, but yeah, it's the NIL thing changes cards now. It's mm-hmm. I think the long term effects of it are going to be interesting, right? Because if you have a guy like I'm trying to think Quinn Ewers, I think Quinn Ewers is a great example because he's going to be one of the first. But if Quinn Ewers has cards for three years in college and then goes pro and has rookie cards, right? Mm-hmm. Quinn Ewers is going to have five. If he has high school cards, he could have five years of cards by the time he's a rookie in the NFL, yep. which cards are most desirable a second year in college worth nothing at all. Like I think that that's an interesting thing to see how that plays out in the card world. But for the play, for the point of this play, it's love of value box, love college football, love stuff like this. So this is a great play. Yeah. 
I love it as well. I agree with everything you just said. Next one, Jay. I just need to triple down on how epic I think the content series that you're doing with um, Ohio State players is. Appreciate that. Just want to make sure you're aware how good of an execution I think it is. Not only from what it takes to actually get the athlete to show up and do the deal and do whatever that contract looks like and navigate all the situation for them to get there, but then bringing cards into it, everything I've seen, they're genuinely interested in the conversations and yeah, I just think it's super cool. Like, and I just want to make sure you know that I think it's a really, really, really cool execution and it's something that will now you're, we're going to see it everywhere. Yeah. I think I talk about this with the players a lot, but for me, it's like, I've talked to you guys before, right? I go to a lot of the Ohio state games, the important games. I like, Good see. I love Ohio State football. We we know this, right? Like like Lou likes the Astros. Like Tyler likes Penn State. Like we we joke about it a lot with each other. But like I care about Ohio State more than cards. Like it means so much to me. So I tell the players all the time. Like I go to big games. I love Ohio State football. And these players don't see this money, right? So to be able to offer a player money to come in, open some cards, talk about their journey, create some content build a relationship. It's really cool. Like we had CJ Hickson, right? That's the number one recruit in the class of 22 for Ohio state was the number 11 prospect in the nation. 15th best prospect Ohio state's ever recruited. Not done much for Ohio state this year. We have good linebacker play. Won't won't really need him to do a whole, whole lot. Knock on wood. Um, But I hope CJ Hicks is an awesome player two years from now, three years from now. Right. And I can look back and be like, Remember when CJ Hicks came in early and we've built a relationship over two or three years. So when CJ Hicks goes to the NFL, I can be like, Hey CJ, you want to come back in? I'll pay you again. Talk about your, your journey. Hey CJ, you just beat Michigan. Hey, you want to come in and talk about that? Hey CJ, you're, you're, you're going to the NFL. You want to talk about that? Hey CJ, you want a national title. You want to talk about that? Like build that relationship there. And I just, I think the opportunity, I think the opportunity to do that, it's, it's, it's cool for them. I love being able to, you know, have a relationship with Ohio State players. I love being able to talk with them, open some boxes, create content. It's it's fun. And um, for me, for that perspective, it's it's cool for NIL. And I just think it, it, the opportunity is like, it's amazing to me. It, I'm surprised more people aren't taking advantage of it earlier on. I think these kids would be will are willing to do cool things like this. And I think from a business perspective, it's a great way to grow, especially in the local community, because I think I know, I know being born and raised in Columbus, what Ohio state football means in Columbus. And I know how popular those guys are. And I just think it's a, it's a great opportunity to, uh, you know, build a relationship with people that matter in the community. Yeah. And to me, it's an evolution of like the same, you know, when you say you're surprised people aren't doing more of it, you know, I think people could be surprised like why people don't engage in random hobbies that help them understand business savvy. Like that is, I think, similar, right? When I think about the show, it goes hand in hand, right? Like someone that is willing to get a table at a show, bring product and have the audacity to try and sell it to someone. And then all the things that come with what it actually takes to sell a single card, whether it's $5 or $50, all the reps that you put into that is no different than how do I get in touch with this person? What do I offer them? How do I negotiate with them? When they ask me to talk to someone else, how do I deal with that? Great, now they're coming. What does the execution look like? I have to deliver on that. Meaning, okay, the person bought the card, cute. You can't wait eight days to show up to the post office to send it off. Like it's all to me a similar thing. And I think it's really cool to see and just goes back to a little bit of the energy from this weekend of just, there's just so much good in just actually like having to do a deal that isn't just, okay, we made money and all this that can teach you some of the execution, you know, in other places. Yeah. I think, and I think it goes back to your point earlier about it's not just going to be easy to just make millions and millions of dollars in sports cards anymore. And I just think you've got to be creative and 
do different things, offer different things and, you know, go outside your comfort zone and, and try to expand. So I think it's personally, I think it's a great opportunity to build and grow a brand outside of the traditional, right? Like we started in sports cards, but we're trying to build like a, a, a brand, right? Like Ohio state football sports cards. There's a lot of other different things we're trying to get into. And as we do that, it's not just straight tunnel vision on sports cards. That's a whole nother conversation for another day. But I think that goes back to your point about, you know, Hey, times are changing and, and uh, not only sports cards, but in content and life and the world. And I think it's a school opportunity. So uh, this is from Nathan sports cards. He says, Hey guys, OG listener and love the show with the market being down over the last few months. I found myself getting really good deals on eBay auctions. I have a lot of big consignment companies as save searches and frequent their pages using the newly listed and ending soon at searches to find deals. I was looking through Ryan's eBay page and bid on a Shea Gilgis Alexander out of five when it was newly listed. I put in a max bid of seven, knowing I would get a notification if I was outbid. I live in OKC, so Shea, uh, Shea, is a, Shea is our guy over here, and I knew I'd be able to sell it if I got a good deal. Well, the card ended up selling for four seventy six. so after shipping, I was into the card for around eight bucks. I received the card in the mail and was running a sale on Facebook group the same night. Put it up for $25, see if anyone was interested. Someone took it a full asking. After shipping, I netted $22 from the sale, meaning I profited $14 total. Not crazy numbers, but it will buy me lunch a few times this week. Thanks, OH. IO. Love it. So uh, this is actually really, really cool. I think this, this, this always goes back to the message. Shout, shout out to the fact that you bought it off me. But I love this. We've talked about this so many times in our years over this is brick by brick. You don't need to go from zero to a million dollars to build anything successful in this industry. This is $8 to $22 a couple times a week, a couple times a month. It means a lot of times a year. And in time, that adds up to real results, right? For, he said he made 14 bucks. That buys him lunch. Right now, he doesn't have to pay for a lunch. That's not coming out of his money, right? He's, he got free lunch from buying a card and selling a card in seven days. At scale, that is a re- that, that has real results, right? And I get it. Not everybody wants to do this for money. I totally get it. But the purpose of Play of the Week, we started this to talk about things like this, right? Value boxes, the three for 25. That guy's going to make $100 on that. $100 pays somebody's phone bill, might pay your cable bill, could pay your car insurance, could fill up your gas tank. That's th- th- Those are tangible things, right? So I, I love plays like this for that reason. Sucks. It was, I mean, it was great that it was off me, right? It doesn't suck. Uh, Nathan's a good kid too. He always goes to the Dallas show. It's one of my favorites. Um, but things like this, I'm just like, I love it. So I, I, They also connected with Brad, who purchased it from them, who that could open. You never know, like just – the, there's so much even outside of the sixteen dollars that you make, outside of it on top. I don't know. Agreed. They're probably connecting as friends on Facebook. Two years from now, uh, who the heck knows? They like he posts that he has hosting some event. He shows up because he knows him. Maybe he meets his next girlfriend at the event, and it all goes back to the fact that he bought a random shy girl, just Alexander card and resold it, and the fact that he bought it with an already exit plan of OKC understands that those peeps are yep. passionate about shy probably has a Facebook group, which is 90% local OKC people similar to my comment about the Aussies on Josh Giddy. So that someone made a comment about, I was like, yeah, Aussies are crazy about their people. I think collecting Australian stuff is more upside than, I don't know, maybe I was trying to, I don't want to shit on a random country. <laughs> I love it. Nick, Jay, is there any more? All right. Oh, wow. Uh, this is Ooh. from Pet- Petrol John. I collected hockey heavily in the mid nice to price. late 2000s, but had a kid and slowly stopped collecting. Fast forward a while ago, I saw a sign saying our L- LCS was moving into a new building and it piqued my interest. So, one random night, we had an event in our downtown area and I stumbled into a CC2 trade night. This piqued my interest again and I started to listen to car talk backlog and watch some youtube videos the next month i went to the pig barn in xenia and found the sydney cosby <laughs> 25 for fifth for 15 dollars and the price is marked bin i had never heard of 
Prism Hockey, but knew from the podcast that first-year Prism cards were popular in other sports. Once I got home, I did some research and was elated. I just recently sent off to PSA, came back at Jemmy. Sold it for thirteen eighty. Crosby is a goat. I mean, this this play has like <laughs> every <is> unbelievable. <laughs> Jay, did we fact check this? This is like every box in Car Talk. This is a Hall of Fame. It's player. fact checked. It's legit. My in my head when I was putting this graphic together, I envisioned Ryan saying, "Lock it up. It's over." Yeah, it's over. I, I mean, put it at the end because I wanted to give the other the other you know please some time this is to try ridiculous. To what was going to happen here? This and is ridiculous. It sold for thirteen seven seventy five on eBay. Five, aka one thirty seven. He oh said, like, Crosby, Crosby's a goat. I'm sure I would have bought it either way, but shout out to the Car Talk boys. On By the way, on 37 bids, it landed on 137. Yo, what bucks. the hell? This is like the ultimate. I mean, you got to think, that's a pretty big card in the in in the landscape of yeah. what that is. If it was purple, it would have been over. That would have been the all-time lock. It would have been, been, but he picked it up at a pig barn in Xenia. For $15. Oh my god! Throw away yeah. pickup game in Rochester. I don't think we've in all of our time together, right? I don't think we've ever had a play that checks so many card talk boxes. So I mean, we've good. talked about some Got of these. Back into some it. of these. Some of these things are like iconic in card talk history. Like Jemmy had a moment. The pig barn was a moment. Lou was fascinated with pig barn like we talked about first year prism what that was like goats the goat talk like we've talked about this before so this is this is funny but yeah great shout out to john picked it up in a price mark bin there are some really good ones in here i really like the value box play i really like the uh that was a three for 25 i like the f1 chrome gold auto this was a really really good week i love the shea gilges alexander oh here's another one oh my gosh card clock to two again yikes uh, <laughs> making plays off right. George cards. Uh play of the week. One on what not auction from Card Clucks 2 back in August for PSA 9 McCaffrey select for $17. I had a $10 whatnot credit, so the auction was only seven bucks, eleven after shipping. Figured like every other year, if healthy, he's a top talent, so it might be worth the stash for the price. With this trade to the Niners last week, I posted the card on my eBay starting at 15 and it sold for 36. Cleared 31 after shipping and fees. Not a massive return, but reminded me of Tyler's advice to approaching the market right now. Staying engaged and making small deals where I can. See, this is great. So, shout out. Uh, I don't plug my WhatNot channel enough. This won't even be my WhatNot channel, but you join WhatNot. There's a link. Even if you don't use our link, find somebody's link. You get $10 free when you sign up on the app. You can make plays like this. It's 10 bucks for free to use all on the app. Um, he did that. Got this for 7 bucks. Made a quick 20 bucks. Called it 25 bucks. Called it a day, so. It's pretty good. Shout out to McCaffrey. Second game in as a niner. That's touchdown. Great. Throwing a touchdown, receiving oh. a touchdown, and running a touchdown. I think he's like the fourth person to ever do that or something. Actually yeah, buried I, me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Killed you, huh? Yeah. My fantasy team is actually absolutely Actually buried me in a so. fantasy match that mattered. I have CMC in our league. And the thing is, my boy's been drafting McCaffrey for like four years. And I feel like yeah. that was the first week where it finally <laughs> – Actually, you weren't, you weren't as scared. You right weren't as scared. <laughs> I, had, I had no scare. <laughs> can we can we just go through the plays again? Because I have a couple quick comments for Benson's pulse. <laughs> oh God, Luke pulled up some stuff about Benson's pulse. <laughs> yeah, so ben, for those for those listening and don't remember, uh, Benson's polls would said the Astros are still cheaters. Uh, so Lou, go ahead. I see a couple of Tom Brady cards here. That guy's never cheated at anything. Patriots are definitely a pretty clean organization. Um, what else we got here? Oh, Mac Jones. That guy's not dirty. He doesn't like kick his knees up at everybody and hurt people whenever he gets the opportunity. So yeah, you got a pretty clean conscience there, Benson. It's good for you. Oh God. Listen, he did throw the laughing emoji after he knew he'd get a I'm ride. laughing he emoji for me time. too. Ha ha ha. Uh or I think we're unanimous. Yes, we're 100 percent unanimous. It's okay. it couldn't be more unanimous. Shout out John. Okay. Yeah, what shout a great John. Play. Sid the kid. Cross, Sid, Sid the kid. Sid the kid. All right. As we wrap this Beautiful up, I think we should too. I think we should talk about this because this just happened. Uh, if you guys haven't looked, don't look. Jay, don't comment if you haven't. Seen I really it. have to go. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. 
<laughs> top twenty playoff rankings. Yeah. Were you surprised? No, because they. You should. I was just, surprised. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. What? What? Tell. What, say what the rankings are. So top twenty five rankings got released. Ty, do you have any idea who's number one? Uh. Playoff rankings. Number one, Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. Tennessee. Yep. Tennessee. Do you know who's number two? Nailed that. That was a good job. Uh, number two, maybe, maybe Michigan. Mm. No. They should be, but they're not. <laughs> Ohio State. Georgia. Uh, Clemson. wonder if they valued how much they valued that we win this past week. Penn State's so a good team, man. the only team with a winning record that Ohio State's beat. It's we'll how you need them to be. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Tennessee, Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson, Michigan, three. Alabama. <clears throat> three is Georgia, four is Clemson. They, you know how these early ones are. This is the first time through. It's all about the future. Yeah, yeah, Tennessee yeah. and Georgia play this weekend. Michigan, Ohio State's going to play. Bama's going to play Georgia. Like, it's all, you know. Yeah, it's going to work itself out. All right, and state will be in the. But the, the early, uh, Citrus Bowl. it does matter. The FCS rankings do matter. They do, but the first week through is BCS. like just. The yeah, first the, week uh, through is just like like, like Lou said. There are two top five matchups according to this the rest of the year, right? Ohio State, and Michigan are going to play Thanksgiving weekend, the day after uh, England, USA. Ohio State, Michigan play in Columbus. Georgia and Tennessee play in Athens, Georgia this week. This week. Like, <laughs> Yeah, this weekend. It, it, these these games I are going to play. That might out. be the greatest three day stretch. It could Thanksgiving be. alone is going to be electric. You've got four World Cup games and what three NFL games? Crazy. Yeah, and then we have like for us, it's even crazier. We have all day in the shop. We have a whatnot sale. We have the USA England game on top of more World Cups, and then the next day, I'm in Columbus. For the, the biggest game of the year, I mean, like, what more could you want? It's the light, kid. Can't wait. All right, uh, latest yeah. launch. So as I pull up latest Times launch, I know I know we're Times wrapping this up. I know Lou has to go. I wanted to point out to you guys. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you saw this. I put this on my story just before the show started. Prism Draft Picks College Football was canceled. Panini canceled it. Yep. Prism together ca- canceled the release this year. No release in 2022. Wow. Got an email about Man, it. I guess I'm not mad about that, but that's interesting. As a college collector, that kind of thing. That's a pretty, yeah, 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 totally. pretty, pretty prominent one. But it's, um, but it's the thing I was asking for. It's like, can we skip over some stuff to like get things back together? But I yep, agreed. Uh, you got some stuff coming out this week. You got Origins Football. You have Topps Chrome MLS Soccer. You have Star Wars Chrome Black. AEW Spectrum Wrestling, Panini One and One Basketball, Select H Two Basketball, and Chronicles Draft Picks Basketball, which is the first product with Chet Holmgren, uh, Paolo Banchero, um, Jabari Smith. Uh, Paolo's nice. Yeah, a few other guys. Paolo is good. What's he got? 25, 26 a game. Yeah, He's Paolo's good. a player. Paolo's a real yeah. player. And then you got my guy. What if is MPJ it? Benedict be half the Benedict, Benedict Mathurin. Just has he dominating? Yeah, he's actually really good. Oh, really? He's re- How yeah, about he's that really organization good. in Brooklyn? Yeah, he is. He's a beast. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> All right, I gotta go to bed. I gotta get up in three and a half hours. Love you guys. Hope you had fun in London. Hey, great Love episode, you. guys. It was a great episode. Good job, Ty. What a power incredible. Did. Thanks. We battled. We battled. Appreciate y'all. See you guys. Peace and love. Peace. Peace.